This call may be recorded or transcribed. Good God morning. My Lord and my King. Glory to your name, God. I give you praise, Father. Thank you for the morning glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your keeping grace, God. Thank you, Lord. Glory to your name, God. Thank you for last night. Hallelujah to your name. Thank you for your peace, Abba. Man, did it, did it, will say. Handy, say, call my mama, mama, ha. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory to your name, Father. Lord, we come asking you for your forgiveness this morning. I'm asking you for your morning glory to reign on us continuously throughout this day as we go forth, Father, to bring your glory. Forgive us, my God. And we know that you do, so we come asking you to wash us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness in the name of Jesus. Father, your word tells us in Isaiah 64, Oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens, that thou wouldest come down, and that the mornings might flow down at thy presence. And as when the melting fire burneth the fire, causeth the waters to boil, to make thy name known to thine adversaries, that the nations may tremble at thy presence. When thou didst terrible things, which he looked not far, thou camest down, the mountains flowed down at thy presence. But since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, neither hath the eye seen, O God, besides thee, what he hath prepared for him that waited for him. Father, we thank you, we wait. We wait and we trust you. And we thank you that not only are we waiting, we are working. We are working and we are trusting you. And we thank you, Father, that even now, as we begin to go forth in intercession, Father, we think that Isaiah 65 tells us, I am salt of them that ask not for me. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, behold me, behold me unto a nation that was not called by my name. And Father, here we are saying, we want more of you and less of ourselves. Here we are again saying, our Father, which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts so we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So, Father, here we are again today. We thank you by the power of your cross and your blood today. We thank you even now, Jehovah Nisi. Hansi, come, momo, see, candidate. We're calling on you, the Lord of our protection, Father. And even in the name of Jesus now, as the soldiers go forth, we pray in God, even now for those that are in grief, God, that's lost loved ones, those in Ukraine fight, Father. We pray for your blood, the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus, God. Help to change the mind of Putin, Father. God, President, Lord God, Biden, Father, we need your mercy in this world today, Father. I know you already know. I know you already see. And so here we are again to say, help us, guide us, show us what to do. In no other name but Jesus, we're praying these prayers. Father, we thank you for your holy role. You are our shepherd and you're our guide. We know that you're going to give us Jehovah Shalom to give us the peace that we need in every situation. So we thank you in advance for it. Thank you, God. Thank you that even now, internationally, we are praying across the globe, Father, for the sick, Father, for leadership, Father, that has fallen. My God, we're praying for the hungry, the naked, Father. We're praying, oh God, for the storms, Father, in every world, in every nation, part of this world. We thank you, Father, for those that are lost, my God, and for those who feel that they're found, but yet they're lost in the church. Have mercy today. My did it, it will say, in no other name of Jesus, I am praying. 
thank you, God. Father, we ask for the power of your blood today and we take the Lord's Supper. As we take it on behalf of ourselves, we take it on behalf of our families. And we ask them for you to touch us again. We ask you to heal us from every iniquity and every sin that so easily beset us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Father, even now we pray for Evangelist Willie O. I send out a special prayer for her who's in the hospital. We ask them for the doctors to be able to get the answer through you, Father. We pray for Brother Don and Lord God, Sister Taylor, Father. We pray that they would touch, Lord God, that you would touch their families, Father, to have mercy, Lord God, on every situation that concerns them. We pray for Evangelist Jesse, Lord God, her and her grandson, Felicia's folly and her family. We pray for Evangelist Cheryl West and her family. We pray for Minister Donna Baker. We pray for Donna, Lord God. We pray for Donna White, Lord, and her family and her ministry. We pray, Lord God, for Prophet Sandra Sherd and her family and her grief, Father. Have mercy today. In the name of Jesus, we're asking, Lord God, that you touch Prophet Roderick Thornton, Lord God, and Evangelist Juana Thornton, Lord, as they go forth in this ministry, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, we're praying, God, for the ministry. We're praying for the family. We're praying for Sharon, Prophet Sharon, Father, her ministry and her family. We're praying for, Lord God, Minister Jackie Mitchell and her family, Father. We're praying. Hallelujah. We thank you that you touch a Donna. Adamosa, Donna Baker, Lord God, in her body and her mind. We thank you, God. We thank you for the power of your blood even now in the name of Jesus. Touch today, God. Touch my son. Touch my daughter. Touch my grandchildren, Father. I am just praying and thanking you in advance even now that you're touching my mother. You're touching my siblings. You're touching across the globe, God. So many are grieving about a many things. And so we ask, Lord God, that you go in the hospital rooms. We ask, Lord God, that you go, Lord God, in families that have lost loved ones, those that are hurting, God. We ask in the name of you that you touch and that you heal. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, that we're embracing our new transitions, Father. Thank you that we're embracing, Lord God, the things that we need to realize, these old cycles, Father. We thank you that you're touching us in these quiet places, Father, that's hurting us, these things that are giving us a misunderstanding, Father. And so, Father, we need clarity. We need revelation. We need to know how to war. And so I charge the warring angel, Michael, even now, in the name of Jesus, in every situation, every home. We're praying even now, God, that you would touch, Lord God, as we come in together as a corporate body, praying, Father, even now, that you would send Gabriel to speak to us, to know your perfect will, Lord, on behalf of, Lord God, of our lives, God, and our family lives, in the name of Jesus. We're praying, God, as we repent for China, we repent for, Lord God, those areas, Lord, concerning Jerusalem, the peace of Jerusalem and Israel. We're praying today, God, that you touch that White House. We're praying, Lord God, that you go in the jails and the prisons. We're praying, Lord God, for those who are suffering now and can't breathe with COVID. We're praying for those who have demons and, Lord, principalities that's resting in their homes and their children. We're praying even now for the power of the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus. Even now, God, hallelujah, hallelujah. We think that even now, God, we're not only going to just walk and pray, but we will watch and pray. Thank you, God. Send your hope and to protect us even now. Thank you, Lord, for our personal angels that are on assignment. Who you praise today, Father. Thank you. Even now, I pray, God, and I release on this call divine, 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 divine by the power of the blood, divine regeneration. It will sat for the souls of those who are saved, but they're lost. It will sat. I pray even now, even now, even now, for divine wisdom, prophetic revelation to come over your mind. I say, come, it will sat to rest in your home, even now. I speak for those things, for those things on your mind, even now, that you are real lies and repent. I seek here to vote in northern name uh, but Jesus. Thank you, God, that even now that you're making a way of escape for that one, Lord God, that believe that your eyes are closed and can't see. I pray for them even now, God, that you would touch their hearts and they would realize that you never sleep. My mama was Sunday, and that your eyes are moving to and fro, and that you see all and you know all, everything that believes that is covered. We thank you today. My, 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 said in Isaiah 63 and 5, and I looked, and there was none to help. And I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore, my own arm brought salvation unto me, and my fury, it upheld me. We thank you. We thank you that even now, Lord God, you're going forth with that one that's having trouble in their homes. 
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to your name today. I give you praise, Father. Lord, I hear the word fruitfulness. Mm. Mandi Komo Syria Handi I Hadabashikia. I hear the word fruitfulness. In this hour we must become more fruitful. Hallelujah to your name. You know, we are in the time of seed time and harvest. But we do need to realize that God is desiring for us to be more fruitful. Fruitful is more than just using your gift. Fruitful is in the fruit of the spirit. Hallelujah. More fruitful. According to John 15 and 8, I want you to write that down and look at it. Hallelujah. Fruitfulness. Be more fruitful, said the Lord. Be more fruitful in me and not in you. Be more fruitful. To my glory, that's what in me means. To my glory and for my glory, said the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Somebody needs to understand that you are going to overcome. I hear the word overcome, overcome. Overcome the thing that's oppressing you. Over thing, overcome the thing that is depressing you. Overcome, overcome. And you will. Hallelujah. You will, said the Lord. You will and you must overcome. Ah, my, my, hon, de, e, e. Didn't I say I would do it? My word shall not return more. Look at John 16 and 33. Somebody needs to hear, overcome, overcome, overcome. You will overcome this thing that seems too hard. You will overcome this thing that seems oppressive to you and depressive to you. I hear that in my spirit. I hear the weeping, said the Lord. I hear the tear out of all sad. It was just for that hour. He's sick and it was. For joy cometh in the morning. And he is mama. Do you believe me or do you believe the situation? Ah, my, my, my. The situation has come that I may prune you and refine you. Say the Lord. Ha, ye, ko, ma, 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 ha. Mm. I hear the word self-control. I believe that many of you have tried to control the thing yourself. He goes, I know God is talking to somebody. Somebody is trying to control the thing yourself. And God is speaking to you. Look at the fruit of the spirit in Galatians chapter 5. God is speaking to you about the spirit of self-control. And if you really look at self-control, that means that you are not controlling yourself. God has to control you. And if you allow yourself to be in control, then you're going to do what your emotions. Too often we are moving out of our emotions and not out of what God has given us in the spirit, in the fruit of his spirit, say the Lord. I hear the word that somebody is very, very, you know, what they call anxious, heart palpitations and fear, you know, because fear has a lot of things that tags itself to this word anxious. Anxiety is really what it is in the medical field. I want to talk to you to make sure you understand this is the hour not to be full of fear. This is the hour that we must wait, watch, pray, and fight. I'm sad. Fight. They will sad with your words. Fight. Open your mouth and tell hell where to go. In the name of Jesus. So I bind that spirit now of anxiety and fear by the power of the blood. I decree in Jesus' name that you will no longer feel that heart palpitation. The mercies of God is here because James 5 and 11 says the Lord is full of compassion and mercy. He is gracious. He is compassionate. He is slow to anger. So the thing that you may be ashamed of, the thing that you know that you lied about, the thing that you know that you said that God said and God didn't say, the thing that you know that you cheated about, the things you know you're doing a secret. It ain't all time. God's eyes are moving to and fro. And his heart, heart of all time, is full of love. It's full of compassion. You only need to believe and repent, saith the Lord. My, my, my sin that he is. Repent and do not return to the vomit. I know I'm talking to somebody. It will say, hallelujah to your name, God. I bind this sort of confusion in this hour. Devil has got us confused in a lot of ways. He tried me this week. I bind this sort of confusion over you even now. That one that see, seems to feel like that this is what I need to be doing. That one seems to feel like that this is how I need to be par uh, parenting my child or doing a certain thing without the patience of God because you fear rejection. 
You fear that this is not going to come in time. You fear that this is something that somebody's going to say about you. Or somebody is going to do something to make sure that you don't get to what you're supposed to do. The devil is crazy. He's stupid and he's a loser. I want you to have the patience of God. I want you to think about all the things that God has promised us. Michael 7 and 7 tells us, as for me, I watch and hope for the Lord. I wait for God, my Savior, my God who is hearing me. Yes, God, he heard you. He heard you and he is answering you. Hallelujah to your name. Thank you, God. Thank you even now. I release on this call even now. Greater discernment. I release the issue card anointing over you even now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your promise of the word. We thank you for your light. We think there's no darkness in you at all. We think that we can see this situation and we know that you got us. We thank you, God. We thank you even now that you hold us alone because we know that we have no peace. It ain't you. It ain't you. Sir. So here we are saying thank you for peace be Still, Jehovah Shammah, in the old sit there next to them, even now. Touch them, revive them out of this distress, out of this grief. We bind these spirits now and we loose the Holy Spirit. Lord God, a peace be still. Yes, God, Jehovah Shalom, rest in the old side over their minds, those that have fear and anxiety. Hallelujah. We think that thy kingdom has come and thy will is being done. Thank you, God, in the name of but Jesus, we thank you for it today, God. We thank you, Father, as we come as one accord on this call today, praying, Father, for every family. In this prayer box that I have here, we're praying, Lord God, for those that are in need of prayer today and their families. We're praying, God, for the spirit of wisdom. We thank you now, Father, Jehovah's sick canoe. I got a righteousness. It's touching us even now ministering to us about the situations that concern us. We thank you for this greater discernment. We're targeting this demon of murder, this bloodshed against these babies. Lord God, we're praying against this madman murdering spirit. Yes, God, that's going about the world today on the highways. My God, in the grocery stores, we plead the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus. We thank you that you got us covered. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, according to Ephesians 5, 27, that says that Jesus is coming back to receive a sanctified church. So I'm praying even now, God, that you sanctify us and you consecrate us again. Don't, us, don't let us wait to just design a fast. Let us fast in our souls. Let us concentrate our souls every day. And even as we take up the Lord's Supper today, we decree, Lord God, that we're going to consecrate our soul. That we're going to fast, watch, and pray. We thank you because Revelation 3 and 2 tells us, be watchful and strengthen the things which remain. We thank God that we remain remnant. He said, that we are ready to die. Lord God, we want to make sure that we're found perfect in your sight. Cleanse us again from all unrighteousness. Thank you, Jehovah Sitkanu. Thank you, Lord. In the Lord, the name of Jesus, I am praying these prayers. And it is so. We give you glory today. Thank you for the morning glory. Hallelujah to your name. Hallelujah to your name. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I want to say good morning to everybody. I'm so glad that you had an opportunity to come and join me this morning. I pray that God has kept you. I pray that God has strengthened you. I pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to minister to you and your family and the call that God has on your life to do greater works. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. I'm so moved by today. I've seen so much. I want to do one check here to see whether or not if you can hear me. Let's see. Dr. Georgia, can you hear me? Amen. Dr. Dr. Amen. Dr. Murphy, God, can you hear me? God. Yes, ma'am. I just want to make sure you could hear me. God bless you. Well, I want to say this. I'm just too moved by what i've been seeing a lot of people don't watch the news and the news usually watch me until the lord quickened me to see something and i want you all to know that we are in the hour as i said before before we begin to get our next dimension of our ministry today i pray that you all will get a pen and write some things down so that you can be prepared for a couple of announcements that i want to make and then we're going to move forward in our uh, session. I mean, I, I mean, our ministry this morning for where I would like to hope 
that you would take notes down and ask God to help you to open your eyes concerning some matters that God has put to my hand and yours. Many of us say, well, that's what God called you to do. That's not for me. So we're going to have um, the Lord's Supper by Prophet Sharon Hall, and we're also going to have our scripture devotion by Minister Jackie Mitchell in just a few minutes. Um, we also I want to get prepared for the Sons of Issue card. We're going to go over that. But I sent you all a note talking about those pages 17 and page 61. Just want to cover a couple of those. Um, after we have them do the Lord's Supper and Scripture Devotion. Uh, I want to talk about the five kinds of wisdom. I did send that out to you, but I wanted to share the Holy Spirit had given me about that wisdom. Many of us lack wisdom because we don't have the patience. We don't have what Hebrew chapter 11 is showing us with that whole lineup of those who had patience and had faith to wait on God. Many of us are moving in seasons when we're really in the season of autumn and what we call fall, and when we won't let things fall off. And so I wanted to share in this season of quietness where the Lord has me, many of us are, are too loud. Many of us are moving around too much. Many of us are talking too much, and God is trying to talk to us. And if you was on the call when Bishop, uh, gave his last final message. I think it was so powerful. Well, he it was like he was speaking out of my spirit uh, to us, and I thought it was very powerful. I said so many things that I know I have preached over the years to many of those that are leaders over the years about learning how to shut it all down, learning how to be quiet. You know, this means a lot of times when things are drying up and when they are. Uh, you know, in transition of look like things are not moving. God does have us in transition. And this is why I want him to speak on that because I knew that I was in transition in this quietness of my life, you know, and, you know, because I, I am a watcher. I watch and what people think I can't see, I see very clearly. It's just that I am a very mature person. I watch and I see things and I go, Lord, my God, but this is, because it's very grievous to Holy Spirit. So we have to be quiet because we need to know when to speak and when not to speak. Very, very important. And this is why we have a lot of lying prophets. We have a lot of people who are doing things that they call evangelical, but it's really flesh. We have to be very, very careful because God is looking in this season because it's such a very delicate time that we're in. So we are in these seasons. We are facing a lot of cycles as Prophet had talked to us about that. You know, these areas that we gotta know the devil switches suits on us. We gotta know that many of the enemy are in your face and in your house, okay? And so I wanted to make sure that we understand that this is why we're here. We're not coming here. If this is the first time that you're joining us again, I wanna say welcome joining us but we're not here to try to talk as though we have arrived but we all have something in our lives i'm fighting hell right now but i'm winning the war because i already know as prophet is teaching you can't teach something you can't even begin to lead anything unless you've been through something god is trying to get us to remember the thing what i brought you out of so you don't go back to that vomit and then you don't get tricked by the devil Okay, and so I think it's very important that we look at these ultimates and absolutes that God is telling us in his word. So we don't come to you with the ultimate and absolute. We come to you with the word of God humbly. And we come to you making sure that the things that we share on this call, that you don't think that just because we're teaching this, that we have arrived. No, 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 we have not. And we fight every day because we all in this flesh and we all won't fight, amen. And so I wanna make sure that those that are on the call realize that because Proverbs 14 uh, and 12 tells us there's a way to seem it's right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And so we got to recognize that not only do people are dying out of spiritual ignorance, but their families are being destroyed. Their souls are being destroyed because they're spiritually ignorant in the thing that, that seems right to them. That seems like that this is where I've arrived to, I know. Okay, so I wanted to make sure that we bring that out. Prophet's going to come back next week and share about these cycles and getting to know your enemy so you can know their mode of actions.
and things like that so you can be more clear about that if you haven't gotten this book please check it out i know you i've sent the picture on the last one i, I sent out earlier it's called excuse me chosen and i know that many of you did get it i know he's grateful chosen according to his purpose the hunter and the prey and so i, I know you all want to bless him but I am really wanting to make sure you also know that we're in the hour right now as a ready remnant. We've got to understand the seasons and the times, okay? That's what I wanted to bring out this morning on that part. And we need to stay cognizant to pray for one another because many of us are sick and going through things. A lot of people call and check on me. I call and check on them, but I just can't sit and talk on the phone, okay? I, I, I am one woman service in this house, in my office, but I do pray for people constantly. I am an intercessor and an apostle, which means that I set the foundation. I tear down some gates in hell as well. So I can't do a lot of talking because I see a lot of things that I have to worry about. Okay, so I am here to say, we need to get in the place of our season. Okay, we need to get into place to understand some of the things that I brought out early on with the anxiety and the fear and things like that the devil's trying to bring to us. I think that, you know, we're fixing to lose. And then we go, we know we got doubt and unbelief working and, and, and God can't answer in that. Just look in Hebrews chapter 11. By faith, they went. Okay, and so I also wanted to share these announcements before we get started about uh these areas that I believe that we should be cognizant about in regards to support. Many of you on here have supported this ministry regardless if I ask or not. And so I am asking in a special way for two things today. And so as you take up your Lord's Supper today, and even if you don't, I pray that you would ask God about this. Ask God, should I help this ministry in this way? Because remember, it ain't for Sandy Murphy. Because it was for me. I've been and quit. You know, for what, for what it comes back with. You know, but I believe God for what it is in regards to souls. Okay, because we have a lot of lost soul in our own house. But in the, in the, in relations to uh, us trying to reach out to those people who are running for their lives, I believe that we should find a way to see how we can help those who are there in the war, who are there going through these babies, who are going through in this realm of the war. And so those who will, I pray that you will help those uh, in the Ukrainian crisis to be able to send something. Prophet Roderick uh, said that he was going to uh, get others to support it, he and myself and others. Uh, who I mentioned to this already has already sown and the place where we're sowing ours at is uh, uh, Somebody Cares America. I hope you're writing it down. Somebody Cares America. I've been knowing this ministry for a very long time. Doug Stringer, you can look him up. Doug, S-T-R-I-N-G-E-R. Been knowing him for a whole lot of years and he does a mighty work. And so when I saw what he was doing, I said, well, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. He's already getting things over there. Let's let's do it. I find it very interesting that I saw the woman on TV who is a movie star or what have you, a talk show host, and she got all these millions of dollars going to help the people. But we as a body of Christ can't get nothing done together. You know, I never can understand that part. But when it comes to what we want to get together for ourselves, isn't that interesting? I won't even go there. But I want to share a little bit about this announcement in regards to this new outreach that God has me doing. I started what we call Whole uh, Single Women's Academy. And this Single Women's Academy, what it's uh, designed to do for women that are 17 to 29, trust me, it is God. Because with all that I do, I'm like, Lord, I just can't. But he gave me a dream and I talked to a, uh, my mentor and covering about it. And, you know, just to cover me in this, because this is a very sensitive situation. But it's an inner healing and deliverance ministry. And so they'll go through nine months for this particular uh, academy for single women, again, 17 to 29. I've been getting, and since this has been released, I've been getting calls from people everywhere. 
trying to get even people past 35 in it. What my goal is to prayerfully see how God would do this. I'm not saying that I'm excluding them, but they'll be able to come to one of the events that we are hosting in this nine month series for these women to come out. There's a full uh, program books and tools that they need to finish this nine months. We start on the 27th of this month. We got six weeks that I'm asking you to please So It takes $300 to take care of these women. We're only doing a small group of women between six and eight women. We're not doing a lot of women. We can't because of the souls and blood that's on our hands with them. We want to make sure that these come out and be a testimony. But we will be impacting other women through our Women Power Night. So I'm just saying that if you all will be willing within the next six weeks, some of you got your income tax, I pray that you will allow God to talk to you to sow, I didn't say the 300, any size money into these uh, six to eight women, okay? Um, I am writing some grant money to get the things done for what we need to do in that nine months because right now, currently, the majority of the money is coming out of my own personal money, to be honest. But I already know it always come right back because I'm doing the will of the Lord, not the will of Sandy. But I am supposed to ask, or I wouldn't know how to get help. So I got my help that's coming to help with the the, uh, the groups that's going to be, I mean, the facilitator is going to help facilitate. I'm only going to be planting it and they're going to be trained to do the work. So this is the season. This is the season that we have to be graceful. We have to be grateful and not grumble and complain and not backbite. We have to be prepared to reach out beyond our own four walls. But we do need to start inside first, okay? But we do need to go beyond that. When you know you've done your due diligence inside, now it's time for us to go outside, amen? When you've done your due diligence inside, because God do, does the rest. You just plant the seed and he'll do the water and the increase. And so now I want to share briefly about, I think I gave that information on what's coming up, um, about your support and how you can do that. You can send that to uh, betterfamily3 at gmail.com. That's our PayPal account betterfamily3 at gmail.com. Now, if you just put that in there and you, it'll come up in PayPal. If you don't have PayPal, you could do the cash app at dollar sign family, the number two, and day. Okay. And that's all I have for those particular announcements, I believe. And so I pray that on this call, when we open the call up, if you've got uh, something that you want to share after I give the overview, of some things about these particular areas of the sons of Ishtar, um, that I believe that we need to be cognizant of. Uh, after I share that, I want to open the call up so that we can talk briefly about that today. Amen. And so I want to go ahead on and say good morning and see if there's anyone on here and get see if I see a couple of numbers that I'm not familiar with and see if uh, who invited you. Okay, I'm not familiar with. Let me see, I don't know. This number don't look familiar. Oh, God bless you. This is 6964. Are you new to the phone call? I, uh, this is Jenny Atkinson. Dr. Georgia Lawrence invited me, and I've been on on occasion. Oh, Thank God bless you. you. Thank you for joining us this morning. God bless you. Okay, let's see. Um, I don't know. I don't know who number this is. God bless you. Is this a number that I'm familiar with? I just don't remember it. <laughs> 9316. Yes. Sure. Uh, Sister Georgia is right here, and thank you for your prayers and support. And who, who, yes, ma'am, who invited you? Sister Georgia. Oh, Sister Georgia oh, invited Sister you. God invited. bless you. So glad you're joining us today. God bless you. Well, I don't see any others that I'm not familiar with. I don't know. So we're going to go forward. But I want to say welcome to each of you who joined us this morning. And I pray that those that are on the call now would invite some others on. Because you definitely want to hear about our angel today 
that Dr. Georgia Lawrence is going to teach us in just a few minutes. And so before we begin, I want to pray that you all will begin and get into a repentance mode and uh, listen to the songs. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to prepare as uh, we get prepared for proper sharing to uh, give us our Lord's Supper for today. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Here we go. Thank you, Jesus. You can give a few minutes to get your, uh, your, um, what you call it, your, um, I got my commercial coming on here, to get your, um, your Lord's Supper together. Amen. Got mine here. I'm getting mine ready. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. I know about you, but I'm giving myself away every breath I take. And it's not an easy task. But this flesh wants to fight not only in the spirit, I want to drop kick somebody. <laughs> but God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord, for your brokenness. Thank you for the love. Here I am. Tell him. Yes, God. My life is in your hand. Just a moment for somebody to meditate on the thing that you know is still, still pressing you to be this way. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, glory to God. No, I do. I place them in your hand, Father. I give away the fear. Hey! I give away the shame. I lay it on the altar so you can use it through me. Yep. Somebody need to feel that. Is he using you? Or are you using him? For your fleshly desires. I give myself away. Yeah, God, my life is not my own. To you, I belong. I give myself to you. I know I do by the power of blood. I release you. I mean, Prophet Sharon Hall to go ahead and prepare us for our love supper. Thank you, Dr. Murphy. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. everybody. Uh, I pray that everybody have their 
uh, bread and their shoes or whatever you have. Um, yes, to ma'am. Be blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to be reading from 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through uh, 26. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Take the bread. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. And after the same manner, he took the cup, which he had sucked, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often, often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. You can drink. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For as often as ye drink this Eat this as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup. Ye do show the Lord's death till he come. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Holy Spirit be with you all. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah to your name. Glory to your name, Thank God. you, Lord God. Thank you, Just Jesus. give God some praise. Just give Hallelujah. him some praise right now and just thank him. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank him for what he's done for us, dying on the cross. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise thank you, Lord Jesus. God. We thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for the blood. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to your name, God. Thank you for your supernatural healing. Thank you. Somebody need that for healing in their bodies. Yes, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. Hallelujah to your name. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you so much, Prophet. We really appreciate you. Pray your strength back for the work that you have done here today with us. I appreciate you so much. And all of you, I really appreciate you that has come alongside to help in this ministry. I really do appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming alongside and helping with what we're doing here today. God bless you. And so now we're going to move forward and prepare. If we can have our devotion word today, I really would appreciate that. Let's see, where are you? I don't know if she's there or not. I forgot her number. You looking for me, Dr. Murphy? <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> Calling for my uh, house phone, so I say, let me okay. stop. You can get ready. Okay, great. Praise you, Jesus. Praise <laughs> well, I just praise God, and, and, and I, I just, I'm grateful and thankful even to come before you all, and I, I do truly thank you, uh, Dr. Murphy, even for this platform that, that God has laid on your heart and, and your obedience to hear from God, even for such time as this. So before I, I start, I just want to say a quick word of prayer. Father God, I thank you, Lord God, for all that you continue to do in and through our lives, Lord God, uh, even for such a time as this, Lord God. So I thank you what you've given me to share, Lord God, that it's received. Thank Lord you, Father. God, and according to your will, and it's in Jesus' name that I pray to say amen. Well, I'll amen. be reading verses from uh, the book of psalms 119 one of my favorite psalms verses 1 through 11 and i'm reading from uh the new living translation but it's an older version 19 uh it's 94 <laughs> uh but it says happy are people of integrity who follow the law of the lord happy are those who obey his decrees and search for him with all their hearts they mm. do not compromise with evil and they walk only in his path You have charged us to keep your commandments carefully. Oh, that my actions will consistently reflect your principles. And then my two favorite verses. When I learn your righteous law, I Mm. will you by living as I should. I will obey your principles. Please don't give up on me. Verse 9. Can a young person stay pure by obeying your word and following its rules? I have tried my best to find you. Don't let me wander from your command. 
I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. God's word is true and truly wonderful. And if we stay true to God and his word, no matter how bad the world becomes, and even if Dr. Murphy was praying about what's going over on over in Ukraine, and it's, it's going to get worse. But obedience to God's laws is the only way to achieve real happiness in this life and even in the life to come. We, we are drowning in a sea of impurity. Everywhere we look, we find temptation to lead yes. us lives. Even the, the question that was asked in verse 9, it troubles us all. How do we stay pure in a filthy mm-hmm. environment? We can't. We cannot do this on our own. But That's right. of us have counsel and strength more dynamic than the tempting influences around us. Where can we find that strength and wisdom? I'm glad you asked. We can't find it by reading God's word and doing what it says. As verse 11 says, hiding, that means keeping God's word in our heart. It's a deterrent to sin. And that right there should make us motivated or even inspire us to want to memorize God's word. But memorizing scripture alone will not keep us from sin. We must also put God's word to work in our life, making it a vital guide for everything that we do. Yeah. And it's like that cow chewing on the crud. He, he has digested all that he wants and then later brings it back up and, and chews and chews on that crud. Holy yes. Spirit. God's word back to our memory, but but if we don't have anything down on the inside of us, what mm. would we have to bring to our memory? If we're not reading and studying God's word so we can apply it to our lives, and, and even when we, you know, we have more months than money, as they say, we need mm. to know Philippians 4 19 says, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That's yes. our counsel, our strength. We build our faith on by trusting and believing God's word is true. It is immutable. And that means unchanging over time or unable to be changed. His promises are yea and amen. And, and even in the trials and the tribulations and temptations that we face day in and day out. But we have to know where our help comes from. Even in verse 10 in Psalms 119, it says, I've tried my best to find you, but it's good to know that our best is not good enough. Father God pursues us, not because of who we are, but because of who he is and that he is the one that will lead that 99 just to get that one. That one that he has chosen, he he chose me, he chose you, he chose us, even as Ephesians 1 and 4 says, for he chose us in him before the creation of this world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love. Yes, yes. We have to yes. know what Father requires of us to be holy and blameless in His sight. And He didn't just leave us to our own demise or even mm-hmm. out. He said He will never leave or forsake us. He put it in His Word, the Bible. And I say, believers' instructions before leaving her. But we have hey. to and so obey it. So it says in verse 1 and 2, happy are the people of integrity who follow the law of the Lord. Happy are those who obey his decrees and search for him with all their heart. If we search for Father God with all our heart, we'll quickly find out he was here all alone. But to search means seeking to please him in all that we do. Verse 3 and 4 says, they do not compromise with evil, and they walk only in his path. You have charged us to keep your commandments carefully. And listen to the definition of carefully. In a way that deliberately avoids harm or error. Mm. We have to be deliberate, intentional in our obedience to our Heavenly Father. And even in struggles, we can fall. 
Verse 5 and 6 says, Oh, that my actions would consistently reflect your principles. Then I would not be disgraced when I compare my life with your commands. And we want to bring shame on the name of our Lord and Savior. As his children, as believers, we want to walk uprightly in him. You know, the things that we can say when we mess up or or continue to be in that pattern of sin that we know we're not even supposed to be in. Hmm. my grandson's uh, Eli is playing AAU basketball uh, uh, this season, and and uh, he's having a game every weekend. And as a matter of fact, I got I'm already ready to go, but I'm gonna have to head out to the first one this morning at nine. And this morning Mm-mm-mm. they play at different gyms. And last weekend we played at a facility uh, in Alvin, Texas. I live in Houston, but uh, which is on the campus of a very large church, beautiful facility. And after one of the tournaments, me and two of my other grandchildren that were with me, we were walking across the parking lot to to another gym, and and I overheard two men that were also walking in the same direction, and and that we were going, and they were having a conversation about the last game that they had watched. And one of the men used curse words as he was talking. And right at that time, another man driving in his truck also heard the man say, and he said, hey, (laughs) We on church grounds or, or something to that effect, but to which the man that cursed said, God knows my heart, and he's right. He knows that the heart of mm-hmm. man is deceitful and desperately wicked. We can't mm-hmm. use that God knows my heart for an excuse to stay in That's our right. place and think it's no consequences or repercussion. No, if we are willing and obedient, we will eat the good of the land. And it's a powerful word in in, in verse 11, and that word is might. It says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not Mm. sin against you. And we have a free will. God has given us that. And we might sin and we might not. That's why we need to keep in God's word to help us so more times than not, we might not sin. And as children of the Most High God, we are not sinless, but we should be sinning less and less. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's right. Of the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us to lead, guide, and direct our steps. And if we walk in the Spirit, we won't obey the lust of the flesh. But because we have a loving and forgiving Father God, and he knows everything about us, even that we will be able to resist the devil and he will flee because we have submitted to Father God daily. That's taking up our cross, following him. And that's where my two favorite verses come into. Verse 7 and 8, when I learned your righteous law, mm, I will right. thank you by living as I should. I will obey your principles. And my favorite part to that verse is, please don't give up on me. So we bring everything to Jesus in prayer. Our struggles, our hang-ups, our disappointments, everything. Yes. And and he won't give up on us. Remember, his word is true. He will never leave or forsake us. And when we come to him and confess our sins, he is truly faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Amen. God bless you so much for that. That was a powerful word today. You are so right. We got to take what we learn. You know, and this is the hour that God is talking to us about wisdom. So what we learn, we can take those things and gain from those. So the old cycles that prophet is teaching us about in our demonology class won't keep visiting us. But this is the reason why we got to recognize them and then God can help us with them. But as long as we tie them, then they have permission to stay. And so I bless God today. We're going to be having our speaker come up soon. I just want to go ahead and get uh, us to process um, our lesson first. And then she's going to come and talk to us about our angel of the month. Dr. Georgia Lawrence is going to be up shortly, but I want to go over this briefly with us today because it's very important. It's not to just get a book, but we have got to process what God is trying to show us. So I want to make sure that you all follow the calendar that we have um, that's been given to each of you 
for our you know fellowship so that you will know what's going on on the calendar each month so you know there will be the you know the main messages that we're going to have an angel or we're doing demonology so it'll be the first of the month a meeting would be uh angels and then the second one and of course covering our book and then the second one would be demonology uh during that uh second week which will be next week so please invite someone because you definitely want to hear what prophet has to say and so you can also get the handout of what we're covering so if you don't have the handout uh so you'll be kind of wondering what we're talking about uh please email me at eladysons e-l-a-d-y s-o-n-s at gmail.com and i'll be happy to send you the handout handout attachment now you all be getting an email uh invite from our google calendar so i made a mistake and sent out the calendar early and people thought we were supposed to be meeting on wednesday night or tuesday night whichever one it went out on but no that was just a reminder because it's more work for me to send out the emails than it is for me to do the calendar reminders so you'll see attachments on your reminder and all of that just want to make sure you know that so that you can start reading the reminders or reading the invites because if you don't then you won't know what's going on okay the calendar is only going to tell you what's happening it's not going to give you details okay so on that one that you got this time it gave you the detail that we're talking about the sons of Issachar about those uh questionnaires that was on those chapters one and two on those pages that I gave you which was pages uh, 17 and page uh, 61 of the sons of Issachar book um, I did not include that we're going to be talking briefly about the message that I did on the YouTube on the five kinds of wisdom. I sent out part two this week, but I want to say this to you. This is all optional for you to listen to, just that you won't really understand where we're coming from when I'm talking about a certain issue. In this hour, the Bible is telling us, according to Proverbs 2 and 6, that the Lord gives us wisdom, and from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. So we have to activate that. Many of us are not activating that because we're so busy, you know, doing so many other things. We have to find that time to get along with God, you know, to really learn, as her message just said. We need to make sure that we learn those things so we can know how to go so the cycles won't keep visiting us but our speaker which was bishop gill who spoke to us you can go back and listen to the uh youtube tapes on sessions s-e-s-s-i-o-n-s -S -S the number two real r-e-a-l and you'll be able to listen to the messages that he did the last one that he did was just dynamic as i said he was speaking almost out of my mouth um from over the years that i have spoken to leadership and families about so in transition and seasons he talked about the season of quietness he talked about preparation he also talked about making sure that we go, don't go ahead of god he talked about disconnecting you know from those grumblers and those complainers those people who avoid truth you know he talked about the autumn season which we call fall you know, he talked about being patient, you know, he talked about that transition where we are at and that quietness is so important because we hinder where God is trying to take us when we go ahead of God, when he's trying to get you to see, go sit down somewhere, be quiet and listen to me, you know. And I also had told everybody, if you read Revelation, uh, in any part of Revelation, because it, it makes it very clear that you're going to be blessed. If you read any part of Revelation continuously chasing after God about a matter before you make a decision that that's not going to be good for you when you're not seeking God. If you read that, trust me, he's going to give you a dream. He's going to show you something. But you, we don't want to, you know, go after or seek after God. And so many times God is trying to shield us from things, but we're still putting ourselves in place. And when God is trying to show you, you may just be in that season of fall that he talked about calling it autumn. And so we have those four seasons in our lives. We have the fall, the summer, the spring, the winter, right? But in all of these, God, is, it represents times in our lives that we constantly have read over and over again in Ecclesiastes about there's a time. But we need to recognize in this last day in Philippians 4, I want you to write this one down, 11 through 13, that talks about I have learned in whatsoever state I'm in, therefore to be content. I both know how to be abased and I know how to abound everywhere and in all things. I am instructed to be both full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. 
I can. Yes, you can. You can do all things through Christ, which strengthen it me. You can. But through Christ is the key there. Through Christ. And I believe that we're in the hour, as far as the body of Christ is concerned, to understand your time and your season, to make sure you do not go ahead of God, and that you don't be late when God is trying to show you something. These seasons are very important in our lives. So God wants us to not only, as I say, just be praying, he wants us to watch as he describes in Isaiah 6, 2, 6, and 7. And many of us, our discernment is off. We can't see, we can't hear. And that that we see is perverted because we're still looking through the lenses of our old man flesh or the things that's more comfortable for us. And so I want to make sure that we be, be very, very careful in that as he has spoken to us. But this is the word I want to give you. And we're going to get into that really quick, quick and open the phone up in regards to those five kinds of wisdom. In that first one I talked about for us to really recognize the area where we are when God is trying to talk to us about those times in our lives that he's given us a preordained wisdom. That means he's ordained something. He's ordained someone in your life, you know, in our lives to be able to let this inborn wisdom that he's given us to move forward in that. But many of us are not pruned. We're not shaped to do what God wants us to do. Many of us allow ourselves to shape ourselves. And how, like I always say, you get with that thing that seems comfortable for you. So this is where you go. You know, I call it these places that we don't want to go in. We don't want to go in the thin and narrow place that God is trying to get us to go in so we can have the aha moments about who we really are and what we're really doing. And so the preordained is the first one I talked about. And I talk about that. You can see that on the on YouTube channel. I talk about that first preordained wisdom that we got to have. And we learn this because many of the things that we learn is what we grew up with. Many of the things that we are doing are perverting our talents and our gifts that God has given us in the area that he wants us to do. We don't take that preordained wisdom in that fashion. We do it the way we want to do it. You know, certain things we do it because we think we already know how to do it, and we do. But God wants to make sure we understand where we are. I covered the six steps on this week about the preordained wisdom that God develops us in to have consciousness of. I gave you those six steps and, and to teach you how to get into those places. So I'm not going to go over them. The YouTube teaching is out there that I just did this week about those six steps that you need to take to ask God to help you develop it better uh, for your consciousness of the preordained wisdom that he's already given all of us, okay? So the next session that I'll be talking about the impartation of the wisdom. I think I have given impartation over this call and prayer for it. The Lord will say the same, I'll do it again before we get off of here. But I want to uh, give briefly before we get into the book really quick about us a place of cutting away. You know, as I began to read and think about even the time that we're in right now in the daylight saving time, we're in a time to set our clocks. Same thing. we got to set our clocks to see what it is that I need to uproot. That's why it's very important that you listen to what uh, prophet is sharing with you from experience. We're trying to show you that we have not arrived, but we are showing you that the tricks of the devil is to destroy, is to divide, is to, to make sure it separate, to make sure it don't activate anything to bring God glory. And so you need to set your clock. You can see that right now. So tonight when we go to bed, we have to set our clock. But I want you to be cognizant of when you're setting your clock. As you can see way before now that we had daylight. Daylight started to come and dawn on us. If you would look when you get up in the morning, you see how it would look early in the morning. Abba was speaking in the signs of the times that none of us can really determine, but we know that there's something happening in the world. We can see that if you're any, 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 any discernment, if you see any separation or time that you're expecting God to anoint you with your eyes to see and your ears to hear and vice versa, that your eyes can hear and your, your ears can see, you will be able to understand the times that we're in. So when you set the clock, you will begin to notice even now how the morning is, the morning glory, and how the evening is set. You begin to see, okay? So the place of cutting away is very important. I want you to write down First Kings 17, verses 2 through 4. Let's talk about the place of cutting away. You know, in here, he called it uh, uh, the, the uh, I think it's called the sheriff, the sheriff, meaning the, this word, the Hebrew word, C-H-E-R-I, T like Tom, H. That means the cutting away. Now here in this text, the Lord instructed Elijah to go to Sherath. 
And there he would send the ravens to feed him, remember? So Sheriff is a place of readiness. Sheriff is a place of preparedness. And many of us are not prepared for what we're facing right now. I've been talking about the banks. I've been talking about the water. I've been talking about this way before we even got into COVID about preparing for the water is going to be very unclean. The water is going to be scarce. I've been saying this for the past two or three years that you better get you some electric fans and you better start preparing now for a lot of things that's ahead that you need to get you a safe. You need to put that money. Don't put all of your money in the bank. You need to prepare now for what's ahead, you know, and all these different ways that you're trying to do with the crypto and all this stuff. Sure, it may be beneficial for them, but you know, or for us in whatever way that people want to try to go along with the systems, but you can rest assured taxation is going to be coming up on that and a whole lot of different ways, just like they're doing the taxing and watching us through our cash apps and everywhere else where money is coming through. We got to be very, very careful and walk in wisdom, okay? We got to be very, very careful to understand that these uh, spirits of murder is in our own homes, okay? People that are up close and personal who are moving their mouths and doing things against the very, very anointing and work of God. Be very, very careful about these relationships. So it's a place of cutting away is what happened here. It's a place of preparedness for our lives. It is a place where certain things of our flesh need to be cut away. And without these things being cut away, we can't go, as he talked about here, to Zarephath. So if you notice what Elijah was to be supplied with here was water and meat, right? And so the water represents the anointing, we think about it, and the meat represents the word. This is where it's developed. This is where we get uh, put in the place where God has taken us through our season. Many of us are supposed to be with certain people. You don't like what they're saying. You don't like what they're doing. You don't like because they're here in this place that they're trying to shake and prune something off. And God does nothing without a season. He does nothing without bringing the prophet, the apostles, and the evangelists in the place to send the good news to make sure you get an understanding about what, is, what God is trying to get you to understand through Jehovah's sit you through that person, the God of righteousness, so we can make sure that we are ready, okay? So if you are preparing yourself even now for what they call this brook, you're going to visit this brook that's called Sherry. If you think about it, our churches today are really dry. Our ministries today are really dry because leaders are looking for moolah, money, and not soul-saving grace for the things that God has put to their hand. So God is saying to the church today, we need to find the brook of Sherry. I don't want to breach and run quickly to it. Well, why? Because in it, you will find the water. You will find the anointing, that person that God has appointed in your life. But many of us run away from that thing. Many of us take it, and how they say, and they move away because they're not happy about the thing that God wants you to do. You're not happy about the way God would have you to move in this season. I don't want to leave that out. You're going to hear a lot of naysayers. You're going to hear a lot of things be said to you because people want you to be able to move according to what they believe. But this is a place of cutting away in the season in our lives. God is saying to you as a leader, God is saying to you as a body of Christ, after this cutting away, as you saw with Elijah, then he was able to move to Zerah. And where is Zerath in the spirit? In the spirit, Zerath is called the ministry and the anointing and the call on our lives where we're being refined, where we're being redefined. Some things that we need to get redefined in our lives as we talk about, as he talked about in this book here in, in, in the season. So you're planted in the right place so you can grow. We may be called the ready remnant, but we have not arrived. But we are raising up the standard to see that God would have us to know more and do more as a body, as a group to say, we want this understanding. We want this wisdom. We want this knowledge. We want this anointing of Ishakar to be activated in our lives. Let's turn that page real quick so I can get her on here. To share about our angel, I can't wait to hear about. On page 17, I just love it because what he talked about here on page 17, it just was so powerful. I want to know from a couple of you who are willing to give any, because some of you probably haven't even read it, let alone even the chapter. <laughs> because we don't know how to separate. We don't know how to cut away things. That's the reason why, you know. Or some just reading because they can, and you're not digesting anything. But in this devotional here, it says, Eden was privileged 
uh, for the privileged season granted to a- uh, Adam and Eve, which was corrupted by Satan. They were robbed of that glorious season through deception. How would you identify your Eden to fulfill and safeguard your godly purpose in it, knowing that the enemy wants to corrupt it? Many of you already know. But the question that I have primarily that I want to hear from somebody about, our chronos often attracts those with the same chronological events, habits, mishaps, history, problems, challenges, and struggles. How can you prevent such relationships from affecting your journey with God? Who wants to answer that? What have you done to prevent that? Because many of you, as I said, the thing that seemeth right unto a man, because this is the reason why things are drying up and things can't be activated, because you won't get with the vine that God has put to your foot in your life, and you won't get planted anywhere because you've been hurt, you've been disappointed, and all those things, the things are not coming your way. So let's talk about that period and time of season that God has in your life. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up right now. We're going to start at, uh, let me see here. One, two, four, seven. Do you have any question or comment? I mean, that, not not question or comment. Do you have anything to say about this on chapter 17 of this devotional that we're asking the question right now? Your last four numbers is one, two, four, seven. Nothing. Is your phone on mute? God bless you for joining us. Okay. What about uh, 0912, I mean 0918, did you get the book? And do you have any comment on what I asked about this particular question? 0918, nothing? God bless you for joining us. Okay, what about uh, 0575? Anything? Yes, uh, Dr. Sandy Murphy, it is um, Peyton. Um, I Hi. have definitely, I am definitely in my Kairos time. I have made some adjustments or a lot of adjustments. I am definitely um, in my Kairos time. I have pulled away completely from everybody. Um, God has revealed to me that it is this time that I have to pull away from everyone who um, who is just not in, um, have just have the kingdom mind set that I um, have right now. It is just important that i must pull away in this time i just have to be obedient so i definitely mm-hmm. agree um with the spirit that is you know just perverting the calling on my life so i i definitely agree and i have made those adjustments praise god that was the next question it had here what practical steps and you have made those steps god bless you thank you for your comment yes. you know and that you made those steps and it is a difficult one but we've got to keep it moving because this is what the devil wants Okay, we've got uh, 2777. You got anything about this question in the book? About your Kairos or your Kronos season? You're on mute or you don't have anything? Okay. All right. What about uh, 0531? Did you get a chance to read anything in the book? No comment? You know where your Kronos and Kairos time is yet? Nothing? Can you, you hear me, Dr. Murphy? Yes, ma'am. I was trying to come off of mute. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, as you do know, I am in that moment where I've had to pull back. Yes. And um, as I read that book, uh, the change starts to emerge and through the leading of the Holy Spirit, one become aware that God has interrupted your chronos with a Cairo season. That's right. And everything starts to align itself with the Kairos of God. So I'm at that place where I've God has interrupted. And uh, going through the lesson uh, with you, um, transition is what uh, the man of God talked about. Mm-hmm. Uh, transitional state. I've had to pull away. I've had to learn to just be patient, yes. wait on the most high. Um, don't worry about what others got to think or say. That's right. Um, connect myself with few people to get mm-hmm. that uh, information that I need and right. get, make sure I've had that counseling. Yes. And um, know when to go forth, when not mm-hmm. to. And talk with someone, and you know I've been doing all of this all along through what I've been going yeah. through. 
Yes, ma'am. And and um, those are the steps. If you just got to know the times, you got to know yes, when. Yes, God. And and also he works with dates. Mm -hmm. He's been doing that with me. There's some dates, and it just it's phenomenal. Yes, that's it all is. I got to say for right now. God bless yes. you. Yes, well, God bless you. You're so honored. Prophet's going to be talking about those cycles on next week. Some of these are visitations that many of us have really returned to vomit, and you're unconscious about it. I don't want to preach. All right, we got uh, 6964. Kronos Kairos, where are you? I haven't received the book or anything, so I, I haven't been participating, but I did email you so you can send me the, the information. Oh, I will. God bless you. You should okay. put your, your name is on there so I can make sure. Uh, Jeannie Atkinson. Yeah, I put my name okay. on there. Okay. God Thank bless you. So you. Thank you for joining us. I really would like to get more involved. Thank you. I'm so glad. God bless you. Thank you. All right. We got 7112. Good morning, um, Dr. Good morning. Martin. This is Evangelist Dion. Hi and, there. Uh, hi. Uh, I, I, you know, I do have the book, and um, I'm probably all the way at chapter seven. I'm almost getting to seven. But anyway, <laughs> um, to answer your question, um, this Kronos, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful for being re connected with you and I think that's my K Rose getting reconnected uh with you. But I would say um for me to answer that question on how to prevent relationships from affecting yeah. my journey uh that chronos yeah. to is um really listen to the Holy Spirit that mm -hmm. it's time to pull away. Um mm -hmm. and even if that means because I am a leader at our church in um even if that means pulling away from the religion or, uh, you know, some of the routine things that happen so that I can hear God and do what he's calling me to do at that time. Um, and so that's what I would say, uh, just really being, um, in, trying my best to be in step with what God has for my life right now. Because I hear you. And I believe what you're saying about the season that we're in right now and that we ought to be a ready remnant. And it's not time, to me, it's not, we can't be wasting time. You know, some stuff, right. you're just doing something to be doing something. You know, mm -hmm. and that's, 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 that's not God. And so right. uh, I'm real sensitive to him and um, and I am here to learn and, and be uh, better for God. Thank yes, you. yes. God bless you. Been missing you too. Good to good to hear you back over here. Well, I want to make sure you all know that what we're talking about now, wisdom, is really, really necessary. And it's very significant for where we're headed in this crisis that we're in. You know, it, it it helps us resolve issues of life. It's very significant because, first of all, we're applying it. God don't just give us wisdom and we take no action about it. That means you've got the understanding. Amen. So you mean you're going to move forward on stuff, even when it's shaky, like she said, where you see that this is a, um, a place of leadership and you don't want to pull away, but your loyalty can mess you up too. See, because if your heart is not in position to authentically serve when you know God is saying it's time to cut away, and so you won't get the breakthrough. I mean, you, you won't get the bud even from what you've been planning to see where God is trying to transition you from because God has got to get you to obey him even when it hurts, okay? You know, it's in order for you to maintain the anointing and the call where he sent you to. All right, we got 9708. Anything on the question we're yeah, talking about here? Hi, there. Hi, there. Hi, there. Hi, there. Good morning. Anything on your the comments that we're talking about on this question and uh, your Kronos versus your yes, Kairos yes. season. Yes, ma'am. I read the book and um, yes, I didn't have the comment. I didn't have it. Or interest. You know, did you enjoy the part that you've read? Yes, yes ma'am. I, I sure did. Uh, I sure did. It's a powerful book. Yes, it is. God bless you. Yes, Thank you for joining yes. us. All right, we got um, 0918. 
The zero nine one eight nothing. Okay. We I think I did I say one two four seven yet? One two four seven. Yeah, I think that one two four seven. Nothing. Is your you on mute? Okay. Uh, four zero two one. Four zero two one. Anything? Okay. What about nine nine four four? Nothing. Okay. What about nine zero zero eight? Anything? Yes, Dr. Anything Marty. on the questions? Uh, Go ahead. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Um, yeah. First of all, I needed to like um, review that Carmos, you know, needs a specific time, you know, a specific amount of time um, in yes. our lives. For example, you know, Carmos, you go nine nine months of pregnancy, et cetera, et cetera. You know, your school age, certain age. But mm -hmm. what, what I what I have what I have learned um, what I've learned to put in my spirit from what I've read is that some people, as my father used to say. Some people must be handled with a long handle spoon. Come on and talk. But, but God knows how to prevent relationships and he knows how to dissolve relationships. Mm -hmm. And so this is what I'm learning to do, you know, even throughout the years. And, and this book just uh, reiterated what I should and should not do. Because yes. it's not everyone that comes in your life is actually good for your life. All right. So God will give us that sense of discernment yes. and put us exactly where we need to be in, in, yes. in, in his time. Thank you. Yes, Dr. Lord. God bless you. You are so right. I got a long handle spoon I keep in my purse. <laughs> Look in the car, too. All right, we got Donna Baker. Where did you get out of this question? Uh, about the corner and the camera. Well, well, I, yeah. I, I won't. I won't say that I pulled away, but I can say that in this time, looking at it, like I said, the, the minutes, the hours, the seconds, and the corner mm -hmm. time. I, I, I just sliced up my time and started meditating and walking and praying and asking God because this is the transition of season of time. To, to point me in the right direction and then yes. as a, 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 on what to do for us setting his word and where i should go in the ministry and not go ahead of him to give me the right answer when the table time i look at it like you said this is the right moment to get the understanding of what god word say and i looked at it like when he said in the hidden treasures and i found out in the hidden treasures you know at first i was confused about that but now I'm not confused about it by reading this book. In the hidden treasures, if, if you see God's word at this time, if you see God's word, he will give you the right direction and what to do and how he will bless you. That's where the hidden treasures are is in his word. And I look at this as, a, like you said, in the opportune moment is that God has placed you in, and uh, Bishop Gills and Roderick and all the other teachers on this phone uh, with knowledge and wisdom that this is an opportune moment to get his word in the best that we can get it and try to walk according to his word. So to me, that's what I consider an opportune moment that he put that's me in this beautiful. position to receive. That's how I received it. And I thank God awesome. for it. That's what that I is to awesome. Do. Awesome. Thank you. God bless you for joining us. Uh, we've got 2939. 2939. You got anything? No, you're on mute. Yes, um, thank you so much um, with the book and even with the um, guest uh, minister um, that came on. Um, when you looked in at the the book and I guess basically the first chapter, I'm still combing through um, mm -hmm. when you talk about the season. I think that's very important. Uh, with my season, it's transition from the winter season into the fall. I think I'm at the beginning of fall, I believe. Yes, yes. I'm in. But even mm -hmm. 
even as you think about it, I guess with my my stance, I always been the one to say, Lord, I don't want to go ahead of you, and then you don't want to go behind him. Mm -hmm. And I think we're kind of wavering. Got to put us with people that are with the wisdom and the insight to kind of guide us, guide us if we're humble enough and sensitive mm -hmm. enough to the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to say, well, maybe you put on a break. Maybe you are going too, too, too fast in, in this particular area. Um, so I'm just grateful for, to God for the, for God, uh, men and women of God, that give us insight, even when, like myself, maybe don't know what way to go. He can use yeah. other people to say, wait a minute, you, you're doing this the wrong way. Right. So I'm grateful for the book and for the, the ministers can, can guide us through when we, we may not know what to do in a difficult season that we're in at the point in time. Yes, you are so right about that, Minister Taylor. Um, we are. We do have to seek help. I have three people that are here, two here in Houston, and one is not outside of Houston that I go to to get my counsel and to get whenever I want to cuss. <laughs> to get me pruned. We have to make sure that we have someone who's willing to tell you truth, who's willing not to, you know, cut around because they honor you or what have you. And these people are mature people, not people who, you know, you just talk to and, you know, and they're not carnal and, and you know, want to be real playful with you. Uh, I bless God for that that we keep each other straight, iron sharpening iron, but I know my position and they know theirs. I really think that we do need that. We need that and we need to understand as we're, as we're talking here about our chronos and cops, we need to understand that God has appointed us. If you go and look at on, on uh, in chapter two and those questionnaires, you'll be able to see, please look at the questionnaires and then you'll be able to get more revelation about what God is saying. That's 7068. Six. Seven zero six six. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, I have had to let a lot of things go, a lot of people go. Yes. Um, and the one thing that really captured me was when it talked about not missing, don't miss your carols because of your chronos obligations, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There you the go. accountabilities. Um, that part, and that is, is because you're you you can get them mixed up. You can get mm -hmm. them confused. That's right. So, in 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 uh, the part about sacrificing your carol on the altar of your loyalty to Chrono. Yes, people, there that you go. Yeah, that part. Uh, yeah, that, that right there. <laughs> that part. <laughs> so, yes. I'm telling you, it's just like uh, people try to hold you accountable for things. And I'm almost like, um, wait a minute, Lord, I need you to activate my wisdom. And this is when yes. you were talking about the, the, the you know, I was like, oh, my God, these I have some things I need to pull away from in order for me to hear you clearly. And That's to walk right. without feeling guilty about things in the yeah. season that you have me in. There you go. It's, yes, it's you. challenging. And it it's is a very. struggle to do it, but uh, God can get you through it. There you go. That is it. It's very challenging, I'm telling you, but he will. As long as you seek him, he's got you covered. God bless you. Thank you. All right, we got 6570. Yes. Um. As, as I was listening to everybody, I was like, man, you know, Lord, I, I know we're thinking about this, the timing and the timing. And he said, uh, in my spirit, he was just saying, if they, if everyone listens to me, then I will not allow them to miss their timing. And mm. because as they listen to me, I'll tell them when to move. He was putting on my spirit all this week, uh, get ready to get ready to go. Mm. And say sometimes we 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 when it's time to go, we still getting ready. And he says, you like it's a track meet when the when the they tell you on your mark, get set, go. You don't have time to get ready. Mm -hmm. so he said if you just listen to me and keep your ear attentive to what I'm saying, then you'll understand that when it's time to go. And I was like, well, Lord, 
uh, what about, you know, all these people coming around and it seems like everybody's starting to move right now and all this. He, he told my wife, he said, wait on me. Then he turned mm. around and gave me the, the scripture to go with that. He says, what you're doing is getting ready to obey me. If you listen, my word in Isaiah 52, verses 11 and 12, where he says, uh, and we always learn about uh, how they're going to feel or whether we have to pull away from people. God mm-hmm. says this in, in God 52 and 12, 11 and 12, depart ye, depart ye and go out from from this place. Uh, mm-hmm. Do not touch any unclean thing. Go out from the midst of her in this city yeah. and be clean, you who bear the vessels of the Lord. For you shall not go out in haste, nor go out in flight. For the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your rear ward, your rear guard. Yes. And several years ago when the Lord gave me that, I, I didn't understand what it meant. But he's saying, you ministers who bear the vessels of the Lord, everybody comes and pours all this stuff out on you. So he's saying, now it's time for you to come out from among them. Yes. He's telling you now, get ready to, to leave, and, and I'll move them as we go. Because as you go, I'm going to be with you. And as you leave, it won't be no miswords spoken about you because I'll be there to protect. I will be your rear guard. And so, that therefore, is God is moving us to a place where we can get quiet, where we can wait on him, where we can listen and get ready to get ready. Because That's I right. believe it's the time that uh, we asked him last year, Father, the harvest is right, but the labors are few. And he said, what do you, he asked you to do. He asked you to send, to tell him to send laborers into the field. This is what I believe God is about to do with all this preparation, with all the yes. things that's moving in the world. As, as, as he's just been putting in my spirit, get ready to be sent. Be ready to go out and reap this harvest. Mm. But you have to be ready because so many things are going to challenge you. Like we talked yeah. about, and we'll be talking about next week, these cycles of demons that come around mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. and kind of hinder you and, and block right. you and bind you. And when we saw this in the sons of Issachar, it just says people come around, these events that come around, the habits that come around, the mishaps that come around, the old history, the problems, the challenges, and the struggles. These are things that come in cycles. So he said, so how right. do you prevent them from affecting you? Come out. Come out from among them. That's good. You who bear the vessels of the Lord. That's good. That's good. You know, as you were speaking, I thought about on page uh, 60 where he was saying that they didn't, uh, the Issachar, they didn't abandon their fields, you know. They kept themselves ready, you know. They were strong. They didn't never let their hands get weak. And many of us hands have become weak because we got with the wrong people who grumble and complain and not doing anything. And as I heard evangelists say, uh, Dion, you know, doing religiosity uh, too often. Yep. And we get drained and put in positions that we're not growing because we're still in this cycle of religiosity. Nothing is changing. It's the same cycle over and over again. And you find yourself in that cycle and you're trying to figure out how to get out of there. Well, God bless you for your comment. Did she have anything that she wanted to add? Um, I'll say one, make it quick. I was just saying, thinking that uh, when you're going through this, uh, if you have people in your life that's going through this and you're trying to change and you want to have a different lifestyle uh, or um, anything in your life that's going on in your life, pray for those, your friends and family that's still struggling through yes. this change. And uh, you have to live a godly life before them. Mm-hmm. You can't keep going in and out of what God has for you and the life that God has for you. So live before them that life and if you want your friends and family to be different show them how god wants them to live and that's the way i see it you are so right about that you know you can't expect the blind to leave the blind you know you are so right about that god bless you for your comment appreciate that I really do. thank you for joining us too all right, we got uh, one more, 9316. 9316, you got anything? I feel like you're still on mute. Hello? I'm sorry, 9316? Yes, it is. Uh, you may not understand. Good morning, and thank you for yeah. joining me all this morning. Yes. Uh, I 
for to the time that the messages that you are bringing the topic and it's very good and i want to continue with you all by the grace of god is sister georgia she's a good friend of mine oh, and she goes to the same church too so i appreciate everything that you said this morning you all said this morning and we are living in the last days yes these times are coming and we just have to be stunned and like you said this morning <laughs> i took everything give but at the same time we have to store and we have mm -hmm. to be virgin too you know That's right. so That's right. somehow, yeah like some of them take the they were wise and they took the oil with them and so we have mm -hmm. so this morning i would really appreciate challenge continue to join with you all you know in prayer and in everything and um, you said about a book i know maybe i'll talk to sister sister georgia and i'm looking forward to hear her message this morning yes <laughs> yes we can get started right now life. for that prayer and everything <laughs> god bless thank and, you so much yes, for joining so us want yes. to let everybody know you know thank you for joining us and you know we are in church and in case you don't know this is we, we're ready to remember but my church is whole family healing and deliverance center and i i have a church without wives and i've been doing this for i don't know how many years i know more than 25 30 years you know um and started out on the phone and then we meet up at the hotel whenever god leads me to do that but right now of course we're not doing that i want to say this i'm gonna let her get started and i appreciate all of y'all's comments and i wanted to make sure i give you some homework for you to think about to go many of you already got up to chapter seven but i want you to meditate on the battles of the epoch season i want you to really meditate on and i want your homework for you to think about this question the question is when was the last time you honestly spent uninterrupted time as prophet said to see god about what you know needs both natural and spiritual cultivation you know you need to get counsel you know god is telling you don't keep doing that you know you're not ready for that you know your heart is not in position for that you know you don't have enough wisdom for that or understanding of that you know so when was the last time you honestly spent un interrupted time that means you don't have music blasting you don't have the cell phone near you when was the last time you spent that uninterrupted time and i love how he closed out with on 62 the three d's he talked about the dreaming the daring and the discipline you know these can change your life these practical steps so i'm gonna open the phone call up now for her to go ahead and get started so we can hear about this angel i couldn't wait to do that uh, I didn't go to chap the second page on 62 because these I pray that you all have processed in your time. Many people have not processed these questions that was very, very clear that we need to make sure we look at these hidden treasures in our lives like the Ishikars had. You know, are you seeking God about the promises he said to you? I'm constantly crying out to him. How about you? about you promised me you promised me that you're going to save my children you promised me that you're going to let me see this or that happen many of you waiting on your husband many of you waiting on finances to come through many of you waiting on divine healing in your body i know i'm talking to somebody but god is talking to those who are staying constant in his face seeking him saying you promised me he said remind me of my word amen all right i'm ready we're ready Yes. Good morning again, yeah, Dr. Murphy. Good, good morning. Good morning, prayer warriors and men and women of God. Dr. Murphy, first of all, I want to tell you how grateful I am that God has allowed our paths to cross on this side of heaven. I don't take it lightly that you have granted me this opportunity, and I pray that God will continue to extend his grace, his mercy, and his blessing upon you. Yes, God. Shall we pray? Yes, ma'am. Father of grace and all mercies, open up our hearts and our minds and our ears that we may see what you are trying to reveal to us. May the words of my mouth and the meditation in my heart be acceptable in thy sight, for yes, you are Lord. my strength 
and you are my redeemer. Hallelujah. We will be discussing the angel of the Lord. Yes, God. The angel of the, the Lord. The angel of the Lord. Hallelujah. The Hebrew Bible or the Old Testament, it contains some some figures and some features that's difficult for our modern minds to understand. But when we flip through the pages of the Hebrew scriptures, you'll come across a figure who seems to carry a contradiction. But the angel of the Lord is this character. And why is it so important? Why is this angel of the Lord so important? Why is it so important that we should understand the angel of the Lord. First of all, let me tell you, let's start by looking at the phrase, the angel of the Lord in Hebrew. Mm -hmm. The Hebrew word translated as angel is malak, M-A-L-A-K, which means messenger. Now this particular messenger is not just an angel, but the angel of the Lord, the messenger of Yahweh, or in Hebrew, Malak Yahweh is the only messenger who bears the name of Yahweh. In Exodus chapters 23, verses 20 through 21, Yahweh tells Moses that this angel will lead them, saying, My name is in him. As you explore this character further, you'll encounter a big problem. Sometimes the angel of the Lord speaks as if he is a messenger from Yahweh, and at other times he speaks as if he is Yahweh. Now, how is this possible? See, when you encounter problems like this in the Bible, you may think that the Bible is contradictory or is convoluted, but especially in the Hebrew scriptures. But you have another option. So you can ask the question. Is there something more the author wants to communicate by presenting this figure or feature in this strange way? In other words, is the contradiction intentional? When we take this approach, it will open our eyes, my eyes and your eyes, and it may help us to see some of Jesus' simple claims in a new light. We talk about, let's see the story of Hagar. The story of Hagar, it illustrates the complex way that the angel of the Lord is portrayed in scripture. See, in Genesis 16, we encounter a slave woman who has become pregnant by her master, abused by her master's wife, and has now fled to the desert to meet her likely death. But the narrative tells us that the angel the angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness. Mm. You'll find that in Genesis 16 and 7. The spirit speaks to Hagar, but then something strange happens, and the angel of the Lord said to her, I will increase your descendants so mm. much that they will be too many to count. Yahweh is one who typically Typically, he issues this kind of blessing. Genesis 22, 26, and 28, you will see where Genesis in 22, it describes the story of Abraham being obedient to God and his willingness to sacrifice his son Isaac and having prepared all of the equipment and readiness to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him, from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. In Genesis 26 and four, you'll see, and I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven. In Genesis 28 and 14, it says, and thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth. At best, we think this angel is speaking on behalf of Yahweh. Yahweh is the one we mentioned, who typically gives these kind of blessings. 
you keep going, the angel of the Lord speaks about Yahweh as a separate person, saying Yahweh has heard your affliction in Genesis 16 and 11. But at best, we think this angel is speaking again on behalf of Yahweh. That is until, you know, the narrator tells us in, this, in the scriptures, it was Yahweh who spoke to her. Mm. And Hagar calls this angel. Then she, she gave the name of Yahweh who spoke to her. You are God of seeing. For she said, truly, how have I seen the one who sees me? Hmm. This story illustrates the complex way that the authors can portray this figure as both Yahweh and distinct from Yahweh. But how do we know whether this is just a lack of precision or discrepancy in the text? In order to answer this, we need to ask, do the authors of scripture consistently refer to the angel of the Lord as both Yahweh and distinct from Yahweh? Is there a pattern? As mm. we continue to read, like in, in the Hebrew scriptures, you'll notice several places where the authors portray this angel in the same complex way as in the story of Hagar. See, for example, in the story of Moses and the burning bush, the angel of the Lord appears to Moses from the midst of the bush. But then God calls to him from the bush. That's in Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert. And he came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And to verse two, and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out mm. of the midst of a bush. And he looked and he behold, and the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Verse three, and Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight why the bush is not burnt. Verse 4, and when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. And verse 5 says, and he said, draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes, off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Verse 6, Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Mm. The same pattern merges in stories of Abraham and Isaac in Genesis 22 and Balaam in Numbers 22 and Gideon. Judges 6, and Elijah, 1 Kings 19, and David, 1 Chronicles 22, just to name a few. See, because this occurs throughout Scripture, we can conclude that the authors are carefully and they are intentionally depicting this figure as a complex being. Part of the way these authors want to engage us as readers is by, you know, creating gaps that require participation and investigation. This is mm -hmm. the way all good stories work. The authors of scripture, they're skilled literary artists. And this complex portrait of the angel of the Lord is just one example of this artistry. What does all this mean? The consistent way that authors refer to the angel of the Lord as both Yahweh and distinct from Yahweh not only helps us to understand this mysterious figure, but it also makes a profound claim about the identity of Yahweh, namely that Yahweh himself is a complex being. Understanding the complex portrayal of the angel of the Lord, it prepares us to grasp the overarching story of scripture in some significant ways. It seems strange that Jesus would claim that he was one with, with the Father, and yet distinct as the Son in John 10 and 3. Yet these claims that sound confusing, it's to the, to the modern readers, it fits in the same category as the 
portrait of the angel of the Lord. This figure, this, this, this ancient and this creative way of creating Yahweh as a complex unity, it helps us as readers to understand that Yahweh is a diverse yet a unified community of love. This foundational for our understanding is that perfect community of love, a father, the son, and the spirit that we have come to call the Trinity. Yes, Yahweh interacts on a personal level with humans while also maintaining his identity as God above all in entirety. This God takes on an embodied form to relate with humanity, ultimately taking on human flesh to restore humanity to right relationship as partners with him. This complex portrait of the angel of the Lord uniquely communicates truth about the character, the identity of Yahweh. Yes. He is a complex unity, one who is both unified and diverse, both near and above all. What we see in the angel of the Lord is brought to culmination in the person of Jesus, who draws near to humanity in order to draw us near to God. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you again, oh my Dr. Oh, God. Mark. God bless you. You know, it sent chills all over me just hearing you talk about, you know, the angel of the Lord. It's almost like rescue. You know, he's there. You know, right when we think that it's all at the end and then there's no more. And we don't know which way we're going to go. And I have a word for someone the Lord put in my spirit and brought it back to me again that many of you are seeking God about something that you don't know how you're going to be able to get something done. Or you feel that you've done so much and you feel like that God has not really rewarded you for that or trying to show you a goodness that he's pleased with from what you've done out of the love of your heart. And so I'm speaking for that one that may be grieving even about you know, this good thing, you know, that you've done your very best, you know, but yet you feel a cutoff and it's painful. You feel grief in your spirit. It's like grieving the Holy Spirit. Maybe someone's hurt you or maybe that what you've given i hear god saying this reward he is there for you and he's going to give you what you're hoping for but you can't lose light of hope you can't give up in the test it's going to be hot it's going to be trying and i want you to know that god is not going to let his word return void i want to give you james 1 and 12 it says bless the man who preserves himself he perseveres that is under trial because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. And so that's all we got to do is check our fruit to see what are we flowing out of? What are we doing? Why are we doing this? God knows the very thought and intent of the heart before we even think it. The scripture tells us that we are, he already know those things that so easy beset us. So let's make sure that we fight against the things that so easy beset us. Like I fight daily because I want to cuss people out. <laughs> That's my release. You know, I want to cuss with words that are not fruitful. Okay. But when I feel that sensation coming on me, I immediately start praying in the spirit saying, I love them, calling out their name and they love me. And I decree that the spirit of frustration has come upon me to cuss. I bind you by the power of the blood. I release the anointing of love, blood or between us. I thank you, God, that even now I hear you saying, God, let them realize that these are the things that we must do in this hour. The enemy is, is sent to divide and conquer the very, very elect in the remnant today. The devil is crazy, stupid, and a loser. And we've got to prove that through our actions, amen. And so we are closing. I want to make sure that those who may want to rededicate their lives and be recharged in the spirit so that God can give you the issue car anointing on your lives so that the divine release will come and that the targets that we talk about here on this call will be able to go you there for and that you'll remember that we've got to have discernment. You've got to fight. You've got to understand your season, your time. You've got to seek the help. 
okay? You got to fix your eyes on God. You got to spend that time. You got to cut away and separate even when anything you cut. You cut yourself right now. It's going to hurt. Cutting away is painful, okay? This is the shaping that God has given us as leaders, as parents even, you know, as grandparents. Cutting away is hard. It was hard for me to cut away when I had COVID to know that I couldn't even hug my little cheeks of my grandbaby, but I had them this weekend and just blessed my heart to be able to be with them. It was it was exhausting, but it was definitely beautiful to spend the time with them. Okay, so for those who are going through that and receive that word today that God is talking to us, I believe that we got to remember that he is for us. And you heard prophet say he is our rear guard. He's got your back. Amen. And so with your eyes fixed on the Lord, I want you to pray aloud this prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come, Father, to you, repenting for everything that so easily beset me. Come on and say it. Those things that so easily beset me in the name of Jesus. And I come, Father. Father, asking you, Lord God, as I come to repent, to receive me, to forgive me for the thoughts and the deeds of my hands and my lips in the name of Jesus. I separate myself. I give you permission to cut away in the name of Jesus. I confess with my mouth for those, Lord God, who want to know that Jesus is Lord again in their lives. Come on and say, I repent and I confess that you are Lord. And I believe in my heart, God, that you, God, was raised from the dead and that you are alive forevermore and you're seated at the right hand of the throne of the Father. Yes, God, you're seated at the right hand of the throne of the Father. And Lord, we invite you. We give ourselves away again today, Father God, on this call. And we say, have mercy on our hearts. Lord God, have mercy on our thoughts. Have mercy on our mouths, God. Forgive us from grumbling. Forgive us from complaining. Come on and say it. Forgive me for grumbling. Forgive me for complaining. Forgive me for speaking words that are unfruitful against my brother and father. In the name of Jesus, cleanse my mouth. Cleanse my tongue with your blood. Cleanse my thoughts in the name of Jesus. And so I offer my body as a living sacrifice today, according to Romans 12 and 1, for your use, God. We give ourselves away and we thank you, Lord for your cleansing blood today in Jesus' name. Well, that's all I have. I pray that the discernment is being charged in this very hour, that you will realize that we've got to stay on the wall and fight, and we got to pray and seek God for that wisdom. Amen. we got to target our prayers sharply. we got to target them. we got to know corporately, and we got to know personally that we have got to watch, according to Revelation 3 and 2. we got to watch. Well, the times of refreshing is coming. The times of regeneration is here. But we have to watch so that God can help us to shed in this hour that many of you are in your autumn, in your fall season, and you can't reject it. You got to let those things fall off so God can give you new. God bless you so much. I love you all, and I pray that you all will be with us on next week so that you can be sure and hear about what prophet is sharing with us in demonology. Love you. Y'all have a good weekend and safe one. Talk to you soon. Please share the message. I'm going to send the link out to your text. Please share this message. I'm going to upload it on Facebook too because somebody need to hear this. God bless you. Love you.